Income tax 2022-2023, self-employed, what you need to know. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from the tax guide for small business for individuals who use Schedule C, publication 334, tax year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, that being income. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement. However, it's just an outline, just the scaffolding, many other schedules and forms flowing into these line items. For example, with the income line, we're focusing in on a Schedule C, often used for sole proprietorship, which in essence is its own income statement, having income minus expenses, which are basically business deductions, the net income of the Schedule C flowing into the income line item here of our income tax formula, which in essence represents page one of the form 1040. So when we look at the form 1040, we're focused on line eight, other income from Schedule one, meaning the Schedule C net income will flow through to the Schedule one, which will flow through to the first page of the form 1040. Here's an example of the Schedule C profit or loss from business where we have income minus the expenses, the net income in essence, the income minus the expenses is what flows through to the Schedule one, then to the first page of the form 1040. Now we're gonna go through basically an outline of different topics that we will be looking at as we go through and think about a sole proprietorship that is gonna be reported on a Schedule C. Remember that a lot of the, there's a lot of different components of the income taxes or the income statement that are affected from a Schedule C, such as the Schedule C, the Schedule One, the self-employment tax, we have other deductions that could be impacted and so when we talk about these different items, there will often be uh, changes or interrelationships between them. So there's not really an easy way that we can just go through one topic to the next topic because they're interrelated in some ways. So we will try to lay them out so we can talk about one thing at a time. And every time we do so, we're gonna have to take a step back and think about the interrelationships between these items as each of them change. You've changed, man, you've changed. So what you need to know. So table A provides a list of questions you need to answer to help you meet your federal tax obligations. After each question is the location in this publication where you will find the related discussion. So these are gonna be some of the concepts that often come up when people think about reporting their sole proprietor business, and we will be touching on many of them. And you can also, of course, go through the publication if you wanna to jump to more information about any one of them. So the following is a list of questions you may need to answer so you can fill out your federal income tax return. Chapters are given to help you find the related discussion in this publication. Okay, so first question, what kind of federal taxes do I have to pay? How do I pay them? So obviously when we're thinking about the income tax system, we have the income tax that we're dealing with, but they also kind of sneak in there, the social security and Medicare taxes, which are the self-employment taxes. That's the other big one that we have to basically take into consideration. Oftentimes one often ignored because when we think about a W-2 employment situation, the employer takes care of the withholdings of social security and Medicare. And when we think of the form 1040, we don't really think about anything other than the income tax. We don't really think about payroll taxes or social security and Medicare, but when you're doing a sole proprietorship, it becomes a big factor. So what forms must I file? So we're gonna go through some of the forms. Obviously we touched on this in a prior presentation when we looked at all the different changes that happen 
to uh, the tax return when we just add a Schedule C, right? We got the Schedule C that is going to be on there. And then we also have the self-employment tax. We've got the Schedule 1 and so on and so forth worksheets that are going to be included. We'll try to touch on those as we go through some of the other options with relation to a sole proprietorship. And of course, if you want to look at this and jump to these questions in the publication, you could see chapter one. And the other question, what kind of federal taxes? That's in chapter one. So what must I do if I have employees? Note that as a sole proprietorship, you're saying that you have one owner. One, one owner generally owns a sole proprietorship. There could be an exception if you're a married couple and you're in a community property state and so on and so forth. But generally, when you're filing a Schedule C, you've got one owner of the business. If you start a hot dog stand. Uh, Arturo, your hot dog. You don't incorporate it. You just start earning money. Uncle Sam wants his percent of it. You're going to be a sole proprietorship at that point. Note that when you grow, then you have some options. You're saying, I need help here. How am I going to have that help? Am I going to hire employees? Am I going to pay contractors? Or am I going to take on partners? And those are some questions that you've got to think about. And what are going to be the consequences of those decisions? If you take on a partner, then you're not generally a sole proprietorship anymore, but a partnership and you're gonna to have to file a partnership return from a tax perspective. And it also takes on more liability. You wanna make sure your partnership agreement is worked out well between the partners. If you have a contractor, you wanna make sure that they qualify as a contractor and not as an employee. Otherwise the IRS could get upset and call them an employee and then get, get you in trouble that way. Uh, you have less control over a contractor, but it's an easier system to set up. And then payroll, if they're an employee, then you don't have the situation where they have revenue splitting uh, and you still have control, a lot more control in that situation. But the IRS is going to require other stuff of you, such as the reporting of the W-2s, the withholding of the payroll taxes and all that kind of stuff, which is quite burdensome. No. So you want to make sure that you consider that. It's also a little bit confusing to think about the difference between paying other employees as a sole proprietorship and the fact that the government kind of treats you as a sole proprietorship as an employee of your own business not because you have to issue yourself a w-2 but because the net income that you have from the business is being subject to the equivalent of payroll taxes that being social security and medicare and the form of self-employment taxes so that kind of confuses what it means to be an employee sometimes when we're thinking about a sole proprietorship We'll talk more about that in chapter uh, one. Uh, do I have to, st or you can look it up in chapter one. We'll discuss it more as we go through our presentations. Do I have to start my tax year in January or I can, can I start it in any other month? Now note when you're starting a business, oftentimes the calendar year is, is the default that people think of what their business cycle is going to be. Obviously for individual tax returns, they are typically due by April 15th, but Sometimes you might want a different year that will be lined up to your natural year when your business cycle uh, ends basically. And that can be easier for just logistic purposes oftentimes. But because you're a sole proprietorship and you're reporting on a Schedule C, you might have some limitations in terms of, can I have some calendar year that's gonna be, or a fiscal year for taxes that's different than the calendar year. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in uh, chapter two, or you can look it up in chapter two. We'll probably touch on it in our discussions as well. What method can I use uh, to account for my income and expenses? So now we're thinking about the method, which most methods that come to mind or the two that come to mind usually is a cash based or accrual based method. Oftentimes we think about those methods as completely opposite from each other. They're not, however, because you could have a system that's kind of a hybrid of the two. Many small businesses, for example, are gonna be on a cash-based system for their expenses because they pay all their expenses with electronic transfers, for example, and you could set up that easily, but they might be on an accrual basis basically for the revenue because they're in the type of business where they happen to have to invoice the client for work that was done. And so then the question is, can I, can I be in like a hybrid type of method? What kind of accounting method? Maybe there's some method or some accounting trick you could, you know, you. 
uh, can I use? Does inventory force me, for example, to use an accrual method versus a cached based method, which is if you have inventory, uh, kind of puts a complexity in terms of your decisions on what method to use sometimes. This one also gets a little bit confusing because when we think about taxes in general, we're usually on a cash based system, right? When we're thinking about our schedule A items, when can I deduct my property taxes? Or when can I deduct my mortgage interest? Usually it's when you paid it. <laughs> but on the business side of things, normally for large companies, an accrual basis is more accurate than a cash based system oftentimes but we might have the option for a cash based system, which sometimes is easier to, to account for, but it's easier to manipulate a cash based system as well. So, so that's the pros and cons. We'll dive into that a little bit more later. You can see more about it if you want to go to the publication for chapter two. So what must I do if I disposed of business property during the year? Now, business property, we're not talking about inventory. If you're selling inventory or services or something, that's what happens during the normal course of business. But what if I sold a piece of machinery, a forklift or something like that business property? What then then you've got to deal with the, the that kind of sale transaction of a fixed asset or something like that. And we may look at that later. And if you want to jump to that, you can look at chapter three. What kind of business income do I have to report uh, on my tax return? So obviously income is basically bad for taxes, right? So the IRS wants to say that you have to report all income unless there's an exception provided by the IRS. So are there any exceptions that we don't have to include in income? And then which kind of things do I have to include in income on the schedule C versus income possibly elsewhere on the tax return? Are there any benefits to have it reported on the schedule C versus some somewhere else and so on and so forth? Uh, you can jump to chapter five if you want to read up on that. We may discuss that more later. What kinds of business expense do I deduct on my tax return? This is obviously the big one because we have in essence an income statement for the Schedule C. Income is bad for taxes. Expenses, business deductions are good for taxes. What kind of things can I deduct? Many of them are going to be straightforward. Obviously, the things that you consumed in order to generate revenue are the things you would naturally expect to be deductible in an income tax type system. And the Schedule C makes a lot more sense from that perspective than all the other deductions like Schedule A. Weird. Why do I get to deduct mortgage interest? I don't know. That's what the law says. Why? Do, that's just what the law says. Why do I get to deduct? Uh, why do I get to deduct property taxes and stuff? These are not business expenses that I needed to expend to generate revenue. These are personal expenses. So there's personal reasons the government's trying to influence our behavior for whatever reason they want or lobbyists did something or something to change the tax code. But the business, this, when you talk about the Schedule C, it actually makes sense that you would tax people on the net income. What people had to expend in order to generate the revenue shouldn't be some, you know, you should, should not tax people on their gross income. You should tax them on the net income. So then the question is, what kind of those expenses can we include and which can't we include, which is a huge topic in and of themselves. And we'll go into that in more detail. You can jump to chapter eight if you want to dive into that. Uh, what kinds of expenses are not deductible as business expenses? So then, of course, the inverse, what kind of expenses can't I deduct? And it, obviously, personal expenses start to get things you can't deduct. It gets messy when things are personal and business. What if you traveled for a business, but the business happened to be at Disneyland or something like that? Then you've got, that's where the muddy situation comes in. Again, we'll talk about that later. If you want to jump to it now in the, in the publication, which you can find on the IRS website and read up on it, you can check that out on chapter eight. What happens if I have a business of a business loss? Can I deduct it? Now note, the IRS is saying, hey, did you start a hot dog stand? Did you start a, a business of any kind? I saw you start that hot dog. If you made any money, remember that we want part of it. But obviously, if you lost money, if you had more expenses than revenue, then the IRS doesn't want any part of your business, right? You would think that's their general standpoint. They don't they want to they want to take on the, the gains that you're going to have. They don't want to be responsible for the losses, the risk in the business. So can you deduct losses? Well, you, you could deduct them. Depends. It kind of depends, right? Do you have income to deduct them against? And then there's certain limitations and so on and so forth. The general idea would be that if you have a loss, 
you can understand the objective or the perception of the IRS would be, we're skeptical of your losses. We want income because we want to take part of your money. We don't want to subsidize you for your losses, unless you're like a giant, like a, like a natural, natural energy company or something like that. Then they'll throw money at you like crazy. But again, for most people, they, they don't want to subsidize the losses. So losses become messy then. So we'll dive into losses more uh, in future presentations. You can take a look at uh, chapter nine if you so choose. If you do have losses, of course, don't be afraid to take them as long as it's a legitimate business. And then and then you do could get benefits from the losses. Many small businesses have losses when they first start. Nothing to be ashamed of, but just realize that the IRS might be skeptical of losses uh, and taking the losses. So you wanna make sure you have the evidence for it. What are my rights as a taxpayer? So we're not going to, we may not dive too much into the, into this, this topic in our presentations, but if you want to jump into it in more detail, chapter 11 on the publication, and then where do I go if I uh, need help with, with federal tax matters, I get, you have some more resources that you could take a look at in the publication. We might not dive into it so much on the presentations here, but if you want to take a look at the publication, that's in uh, chapter 12.